Well, hello, darlings. It's yours truly, Trixie Dixie, with another video and celebrating 36 days of womanhood because like Dylan Mulvaney, I too can fake womanhood in place of actual real biological females. And my God, I'm coming up to 37 days and I'm so excited like the Pointer Sisters. But my oh my, those HRT tablets I've been taking have been having a strange effect on my facial bush. This making it grow even faster instead of slowing it down and giving me feminine features. But I do feel like Craven the Hunter because I too like to wear dead ferrets around my neck. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, over to my pal, Kung Fu Hot Dog, who's going to talk to you about... Well, hello! Oh, 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 I say. Well, without further ado, folks, let's get into today's video, which will have your tongues wagging for all the wrong reasons. So, as you know, there was a film that was released last week in the USA and it actually beat Indiana Jones 5 with no marketing whatsoever. I tell stories. I tell stories that are genius. <laughs> What is that movie? It is The Sound of Freedom, starring the great man himself, Jim Caviezel. You know him from shows like uh, Person of Interest, uh, when he played Jesus Christ in The Passion of the Christ back in the day. Mel Gibson, the film's director, warned Caviezel that once he takes his film, he might find it hard to be cast in certain areas of Hollywood. And I guess Mel Gibson was actually correct with his prediction, but this movie which has been doing absolutely insane business. It's been accused of being a QAnon type of movie. Now, if you don't know what QAnon is, I can't really go into the specifics of it because it's pretty, it's kind of out there. Uh, people who like to eat little kids, which is disgusting when you just think, even think about it, who conspired against then President Trump in 2016. So they're alluding this particular movie to that cultish conspiracy right-wing bunch of theorists. But AMC Theatre's CEO, Adam Aron, recently responded to a number of reports that the theatre chain was suppressing the release of Sound of Freedom from distributor Angel Studios. And like its name suggests, it is a faith-based studio, so nothing wrong with that. Uh, Jim Caviezel is a devout Christian, so He's kind of very choosy about what types of projects he wants to appear in. So a number of viral videos speculated that AMC theaters were suppressing the film by shutting off air conditioning or creating random emergencies that resulted in moviegoers having their tickets refunded. Oh, I do love a good conspiracy theory, folks. And if Scully and Mulder were here, I'm sure they would agree this is worth a bit more investigation. TikTok user, isn't that Daisy, shared a video where a woman says, so I've been seeing all over TikTok that uh, people are going to watch Sound of Freedom and these weird things are happening, like random emergency evacuations, air conditioning not working, and having to leave the theater. So, don't know if any one of you have already been to see The Sound of Freedom, but my friends and I... I gotta say, this TikToker woman is really, really attractive. She has shades of Michelle Monaghan from the Mission Impossible films, but of course, it's TikTok. She's a voluptuous, curvy woman. She knows what she's doing. Anyway, let's hear what she has to say about her experience of Sound of Freedom. Just walked out. Hi. Hi. And we are curious what your experiences were in the movie theater because we pre-ordered our tickets, paid for them, they were claimed, got the link sent, and this is an AMC theater in Pineville, North Carolina. Some point to- North Carolina, well, I'm getting my plane ticket now in that case. Day, the tickets got refunded to my friend and we couldn't figure out why. So we come anyway to the theater after dinner and they're like, oh, well, we refunded all the tickets because there's no air conditioning in our theaters. Okay, whatever. We don't care. 
Are you still showing it? Yeah, you can you can still watch it. So we get to thinking, why did they not send out a notice in the email saying, hey, we refunded your tickets because there's no air conditioning. Um, and we just are curious why they why, wow. why didn't they let us know? <laughs> I'm going to get goggle eyed in a minute if I keep looking at her breasts. <laughs> so sorry, God. It's so distracting. But <laughs> well, you know what? She, I'm guessing she's a responsible parent and she just wanted to see what this film was about. And she touches on a really good point. Like, if there were problems with the air conditioning in the AMC theater, why didn't the theater chain itself send out an email to people who rebooked a ticket for Sound of Freedom before they set on their travels to come to watch the movie? You know what I mean? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, but, but I think I'm going to have to follow this person on TikTok now. <laughs> I don't think she's making it up. I believe there is some truth to it because she's not the only person to respond to it. A jewel, a singer-songwriter, sometimes actress, blasts media for trying to politicize uh, Sound of Freedom. And this is something that I've seen as well. Like the Guardian newspaper have used the QAnon reference. Other outlets have said the same thing. And if you don't know what the Sound of Freedom is, it's about the trafficking of kids and how this gentleman from the CIA called Tim Ballard would actually um, orchestrate operations to go and get these kids out of dangerous uh, zones. And I guess Hollywood doesn't like this type of movie. Uh, this was a film, this was a film that's from 20th Century Fox, I believe. And when Disney bought Fox, this film came with it, but Disney kind of disavowed themselves from that movie. And it's kind of disgusts me that uh, people who uh, blast this film uh, were in full support of Cuties on Netflix. Um, and so you know what? I think this film deserves so much success. I hope it does because if this is the kind of articles that we're getting where the owner of uh, <laughs> of CEO, uh, the CEO of AMC Theatres is basically saying, well, it could be bots, it could be something else. Uh, we want you to enjoy Indiana Jones 5 and all these type of movies. We don't want to ruin your experience for the sound of freedom. You have to really wonder what is going on. And I do wonder if movies like this that gain momentum, the movie theatres suddenly start to make excuses for uh trying to hamper the success of the movie which kind of goes against capitalism because the movie theaters are there to make money so why do you want to jeopardize your own business by uh carrying out these so-called stunts who knows but uh, <laughs> oh it only gets worse folks so we've got a new barbie and ken movie coming out soon can't say i'm excited um, I, I guess the best version of Ken was Michael Keaton in Small Soldiers with Sarah Michelle Gellar. I thought that was a really good. Actually, no, it wasn't Small Soldiers. What am I talking about? It was Toy Story 3, wasn't it? That Michael Keaton played Ken, and I thought it was absolutely hilarious. Greta Gerwig, you know, far, she's a real true activist. And uh, Margot Robbie attempt to explain how the Barbie film is feminist. You've got a female character called Barbie you got two prominent women in the movie, or one's behind the camera because she doesn't really act anymore, and they're explaining to us what feminism is about. Okay, this is going to be so intriguing. So during an interview, Margot Robbie at ABC News host Sarah Ferguson, not that one, is it? Um, I'm, I'm a little... Uh, what is that? In the little that was able to be understood about the film in advance, clearly Mattel, who the people behind Barbie, still talk about it in slightly different terms to you two. Uh, but somehow, they don't call it, they don't like to call it a feminist film. The actors, however, seem very comfortable talking about it as a feminist film. But so, that's interesting. So Mattel, the toy makers, don't want to politicize the whole ideology about Barbie, but somehow the filmmakers are thinking, well, we're here to fill in the gaps for Mattel because Mattel are stupid. Uh, but here we go. Let's have a play of this and see what People we get. People to be understood about the film in advance. Clearly, Mattel still talk about it in slightly different terms to you two. Mm -hmm. But somehow, you know, they don't like to call it a feminist film. Mm. The actors seem very comfortable with talking about it as a feminist film. Yeah. But somehow it doesn't matter that you talk about it differently. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, it most certainly is a feminist film, um, and, and I think the the sort of can you explain that? Why? How? How so? 
I, to me, it's like, that's like one slice of the pie. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I Sarah just says, can you explain to me how it's a feminist film? But like, Greta Dunkerwig is like, oh, well, hang on, can I just have a quick fart here while I just regain my posture? Like, it's so... It's a pretty big It's, slice, a, bit, it's a big <laughs> slice, but like, I, I don't know. I, yeah, I, I, no, I, know it, I also wouldn't yeah. call it a funny film, because then yes, that discredits the yeah. film. Well, hang on a second. The way this film's been marketed, I thought it was funny. I thought, seeing Ryan Gosling camping it up as Ken... Isn't that funny? I guess not. That it's got it's a lot emotion. of heart and it's got a lot of emotion and it's got a lot of like movie references, you know, all this kind of stuff. I'm like, it is funny. So you need movie references to bolster the appeal of Barbie. Right. Thanks, funny. Margot that is a Robbie. Huge part of it. It's a comedy. Right. But yes. if you just call it a funny film, you almost make it sound like it doesn't have a lot going on and it does. Oh, I feel a little bit of a butt hurt there from Margot Robbie. And I bet she has got a really nice butt, by the way, but. Ooh, that's not the kind of thing you want to go around publicizing a film about. You know, you got to kind of be there, but it's kind of getting a bit political in terms of its content. And speaking of which, Shimu Liu, yes, the guy that got these nuts kicked in in Shang-Chi, he defends this film as well. And, and I think his defense is even worse. So what does he have to say? Barbie star Liu says film puts the final nail in the coffin of that very heteronormative idea of what gender is. Oh! According to Liu, the upcoming Greta Gerwig Helm film is worthy of praise for how it puts the final nail in the coffin and the current concepts of gender and addresses the supposed representational imbalances found in kids' toys. But you're talking about the imbalances in kids' toys. So why didn't you play with Barbie as a kid, Shimu? What's going on there? The virtue signaling actor replied, I don't know about you, but I grew up in a society where traditional gender norms were pretty heavily influenced and enforced and pretty prevalent. So I think we, maybe you, uh, were taught from a very young age that boys don't play with that, boys don't wear pink. Okay. So, where do I go with this? Uh, right, boys may not wear pink, fine, whatever, because you might get mocked and ridiculed, but when you become an older man like me, you can wear a pink shirt, but it depends what shade you go for. Uh, take my advice, just go for the light. A slightly downplayed shade, you'll be fine with a nice crisp blue suit. You'll be okay there. But in terms of uh, boys playing with girls' toys, Maybe it's that introduction to biology where, you know, the, the, the female toy might, she might be wearing a dress and you might want to look up the dress because you're curious. Um, but apparently if boys do that, that's kind of normal and boys should play with girls toys. I don't agree with that. I do not agree. Like when I was growing up, I had a Spider-Man toy, the broken arm. Uh, a Batmobile, the one with the razor blade that comes out of the bonnet and cuts paper. Can you imagine that stuff being sold now? You never would get it, would you? Or you get those uh, caps that what you put in a toy gun and it goes bang, bang, bang. And you experiment with that by getting a coin and rubbing the black spots and they explode. It was awesome. That's what I call an awesome upbringing as a kid, playing with proper boys toys. But Shimu Liu, I mean, this guy, I mean, just take a look at him. He's a, he's a freaking joke he really is and of course this guy right in the corner our friend shooty gatwa i need doctor who can't wait oh. oh no that's not it let me try here it is timothy chalamet everybody's favorite darling at the moment and i thought this was a little bit of interesting piece of <laughs> trivia about Chalamet, <laughs> which I thought was interesting. He puts himself at 97% fluent speaking French because he mistakes certain gendered nouns. Do you mean pronouns, IMDb? Because, God forbid, Timothy Chalamet gets that wrong while speaking French, but he's got two films coming out one of which I'm not really excited to see, but the other one, uh, which is June 2, which is November the 3rd, that looks really good. But there's a Wonka trailer that got released uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, people are fawning over it. Uh, I don't like this trailer that so much. So quiet up and listen down. Nope, scratch that, reverse it. 
Mr. Wonka, I can see you're a man of great ingenuity. What are you doing? So already you're getting the ESG messaging in this film and it doesn't really stop at that point onwards. I think Chalamet's fine from what I've seen in this trailer. He's trying to be Gene Wilder part two, but in a prequel. But there's only one Willy Wonka movie and there's only one Mr. Willy Wonka. That's the great Gene Wilder himself. So we'll see how this goes. How do you like it? Dark, white, nutty, absolutely insane. Many people have come here to sell chocolate. They've all been crushed. Yeah, and it's a really underwhelming trailer, if I've got to be honest. Uh, it looks visually great. It's from the same makers behind the Paddington Bear movies. Is it the Christmas movie? Uh, not for me. I mean, my Christmas movies uh, with the original Lord of the Rings back in the day, 2001 to 2003, I mean, the, the release date of those in December was just magical. And I'm never going to get that again, you know? So unless I get a time machine and go back to that moment in time and probably change a few things, you know, to warn people what this shitstorm is going to be ahead in terms of pop culture. So yeah, Timothy Chalamet, he's fine. He, he, you know, he's a good actor. I can't say I've actually sit th sat through a film of his apart from the first Dune film and came away thinking, wow, this is great. Seeing Hugh Grant at the end as an Oompa Loompa was fine, but Hugh Grant was in... The recent Dungeons and Dragons film, which failed completely at the box office. So I guess his uh, box office appeal is definitely waning at this point. But okay, we're about to do massive farts here. This is the Ahsoka trailer, uh, the new one, which came out, I think, two days or oh, one day ago, uh, over five and a half million views. Uh, sadly, this is, the, I think, this might be the last appearance that we'll get of Ray Stevenson. And again, if you haven't seen Punisher Warzone, where he plays the most badass Frank Castle from the Marvel comics, you got to watch that film. But this is a two minute trailer and we'll watch this. And uh, I don't have high hopes for this, even though Dave Filoni thinks Ahsoka is the best character ever. And she's not because she only appeared in a handful of episodes of Star Wars Rebels. But here War we go. It's inevitable. One must destroy in order to create. Rest in peace, Ray. We are no Jedi. I started hearing whispers of Thrawn's return as heir to the Empire. What happens when we find Thrawn? Uh oh. Power. Such as you've never dreamed. <laughs> So we're 35 seconds into this trailer and I'm seeing more women than men at the moment. Uh, is there something amiss in the force here, young Luke? I've spent most of my life fighting a war. That's why I'm trying to convince you to help me prevent another one. What do you mean patriarchy versus feminism? And I both know who could help you with this. She's still just as stubborn as ever. I bet your master found you difficult at times. Anakin never got to finish my training. I walked away from him. Just oh, I wonder why. Oh, gosh, because maybe he's just a toxic white male. Oh, horrible. Like I walked away from Sabine. You never made things easy for me. Master. Shouldn't I be mistress? I'm just saying, are we just like... Uh, Heteronormative now about who he dresses master and madame. As a Jedi, sometimes you have to make Ezra. Yeah, that's the most unfortunate it's a name you can give to a Star Wars character now, isn't it? The decision no one else can. But I'm counting on you to see this through. Nice haircut. Yeah, because you can't just have. Uh, well, actually, you do have some women in this trailer that have long hair, which is fine. But yeah, whatever. Syndrome. Sometimes we have to do what's right, regardless of our personal feelings. <laughs> Buckle up. If we don't stop Thrawn, everything will be in vain. No Musk. <laughs> you have no power. No, because we're the matriarchy. Dun dun dun. And she's coming. Ooh. Anakin spoke highly of you. I'm not here to discuss. 
Are we going to have three guesses who wins the fight between <laughs> Ray Stevenson and Rosario Dawson? It's mm. my past. We have a lot of work to do. Once a rebel, always a rebel. I'll say this much, production-wise, it looks pretty impressive. It looks like they spent a lot of money on this. I think after all the failures Lucasfilm have had this year, they're kind of counting on this to maybe save the brand very slightly. It depends how many people are invested in this, uh, how many people are tuning out. I mean, if you look at the likes to dislike ratios, 128,000 upvotes, 14,000 downvotes. Uh, I, look, I disliked it because it's just lots of estrogen in the trailer. You know, all the testosterone is kind of being drained out very, very slowly after a heavy session, if you know what I mean. So that's it, folks. That's been the roundup of the news this week in entertainment. Is it getting any better? No. Am I getting any better? Yes. But honestly, my mental health, uh, seeing all these... Oh, desecrations of pop, beloved pop culture stuff I've enjoyed as a kid. What can I say? Uh, I just got to keep taking the pills, man. So guys, if you enjoyed this roundup today, this is a long video. I've really got to cut it down. Make sure you leave a like below. Make sure you slap that subscribe button. And if I were you, and if you were me, you better come back for the next video.